Okay, well, thank you very much for agreeing for, for this interview. Just for the record, um, I'm speaking with Don Benson, and my name's Tara Rizzi, Executive Director of AIA Santa Barbara, and we're going to be joined by Robert Uli at some point as well. Um, so, Don, just uh, to give you an overview, we're going to talk a bit about, or we're going to hear from you a little bit about your background and where you grew up and how you decided to be an architect. Um, and then, you know, about your career and the kind of projects you worked on. Um, architect colleagues, you know, who you worked with or had an influence on you how, you know, AIA has supported you or how you've worked with AIA and um, just anything else you want to share about your architectural career, etc. So, Okay, good. Yeah, so why don't we start with um, where you were born and some of your background and where you grew up. Okay, I was born in Pasadena, California, just down the road, and I actually grew up in Arcadia, California. And in the, the 1940s, when I was a young boy, it was mainly agriculture there, kind of similar to Carpinteria. Mm. The property in back of where we lived was like a 50 acres of avocados and carrots and so on and so forth. And the uh, properties in town were maybe one acre in size. People would wear, uh, raise chickens to, for sale and so on and so forth. So that made a major that's a major influence on my thoughts regarding the environment. Mm. And then um, after I graduated from high school, I went to uh, uh, a community college, Mount San Antonio uh, Community College in, in Walnut, California. Well, let me go back a little bit and say that while I was in high school, <clears throat> my dad was a contractor. He built uh, custom homes in a small, chapel or religious building here and there and commercial buildings and and so on and so forth so that's where I, that's how i made my money during the summer and on weekends and holidays and so on and so forth so i became very involved feeling comfortable with our with with building mm -hmm. uh, although i knew knew that i didn't want to be a builder and i guess that's why i went on to community college i went on to uh, so I wouldn't have to work <laughs> full time, number one. And number two, uh, I want to play basketball. So I played basketball there. At the same time, they took architectural classes. They had some architectural drawing classes there. And I just loved them. And when I was in high school, I took drawing classes and shop classes and on and on. And uh, so that was really part of my DNA. And uh, so uh, at Mount San Antonio College, I looked on the bulletin board, at the bulletin board one day, and they were, uh, there was an article there about Cal Poly up in San Luis Obispo. So I applied and uh, was accepted and went on to Cal Poly up at San Luis Obispo. I uh, entered in 1952 and I graduated in 1956. They had an architectural engineering uh, program there and again it was in a nice environment <laughs> mm -hmm. small town and a rural town and so on and, and so forth and i do want to say that uh dean haslin who basically started the school was really one of my mentors and uh you know i uh, think of him almost like a father he was so close to to me and a lot of the other students uh we graduated a class of 25, so it's, it was quite small compared to what Cal Poly is now. And uh, so, so that's kind of my, my background. And then um, from there, I was in the military for just for six months and then in the reserve for seven and a half years after that and came back to Pasadena and found a position with <coughs> Neptune and Thomas Architects. They uh, basically were involved with schools. So I was involved with the schools at that time. I worked with them for a couple of years. And then I wanted to get away from, from the Los Angeles area, the, the smog and the traffic. And uh, 
when I was young, they, you know, there were there was no smog and there was very little traffic and it was Los Angeles was a small town and then, as you know, the Second World War inflated the population by millions and millions and the automobiles and the smog and mm. so on and so forth. So I, in 1958, uh, started looking for a position out of, and actually up in Santa Barbara, and I started working for, uh, received an offer from Art Mosier Grant. I don't know if you've heard that firm. Yeah. It was one of the prominent firms at that time. There were only three or four firms in town, architectural firms in, in 1958. So I worked with them. Did some school work with them. Uh, worked on the Santa Barbara High School during modernization. Uh, a new classroom. I worked in the Crocker Bank, which then I think it became uh, became a department store in the corner of Carrillo and State Street. And then now it is going to be a an Amazon. Amazon's okay. taken taken over the bill. Anyway, it was a Crocker Bank. So I worked on that and I worked on the Lemon Tree Hotel or Motel. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, that's in our neighborhood. Yeah, that's so that's, a, I mean, that was in 1958. So, uh, you know, that, that was kind of post uh, mid century modern. And so uh, I worked with Bob Grant. And then in 1960, well, when I was at Art Mosier Grant, uh, I ran into. Uh, or I should say Don, Don Zemer, who I went to, who was a year ahead of me at Cal Poly. Uh, he lived in Santa Barbara and he was raised in Santa Barbara and he uh, was working with Art Moisha Grant. And another fellow, Ken Kruger, he also was working at uh, KBZ and he was born and raised in Santa Barbara. And so that's kind of the way we, the two of us, Ken and myself, opened the office in 1960 and 19, I think it was 61, Don Zimmer joined us, and then it became uh, KBZ. And uh, so that's kind of kind of my background. Uh, and uh, KBZ, we started out designing whatever came through the door. <laughs> and uh, basically we were at that time, We at this time they're basically doing community college and school work, uh, K through 12 and community college work. Uh, at that time, we were doing just almost everything. We did church work, uh, we did some sanctuaries and uh, master planning probably uh, for um, eight or nine or 10 different projects. And we did some medical buildings. We did a building on La Cumbre Road, uh, La Cumbre Medical Building. We did the, the uh, professional uh, building, the Rivera, Riviera Professional Building up on, I think it's Solar or one of those streets up there by the, uh, the St. Francis Hospital. Uh, and, uh, but we became very much involved with schools at the same time. I think one of our first real projects was the master plan for the Carpentria High School. And then subsequently we did the first phase, or the, actually the, there had been one building built on the site. And we, we took over from there and, and built out the school, uh, did the gymnasium, uh, cafetorium, uh, science labs, and uh, wood shops and administration building. And, and so on and so forth. And then about the same time we became involved. And I think this is where to Don and Ken were big uh, help because they they had been they were raised had been raised in the community, so they knew a lot of people in town. So we then were selected to do the at the uh, Santa Barbara School District Administration Building. I think that's on. Uh, I want to say De La Vina, De La Guerra and uh, Santa Capa Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was back in the 60s and Carberry High School was, was in the 60s. So uh, interestingly, over the years, I, since I moved, when I moved, took a position in Santa Barbara, I moved directly to Carberry. So I became involved in the community and uh, 
So uh, through the years, even though the office has branched out, and basically their main thrust now is in the educational field. Along, I always kept my fingers in smaller projects at the same time. So I was involved in probably a dozen or half a, or a dozen or 18, uh, two, two, 24, 24 little uh, residential projects. Hi, Robert. Hi, Don. How are you doing? We're doing okay. Uh, I just started talking about our practice in Santa Barbara and that we, that I live in Carpinteria and that I uh, took a position in Santa Barbara with Art Moser Grant. I think you remember that name. They were at uh, 126 yeah. uh, Sola Street, a building that was designed by, I think it was Sewell so and Murphy. Um, and My, I, what, excuse I, me. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, sorry. Um, apologize for being late. Unfortunately, there are two meetings coming up at noon, um, but I don't want to rush it. So I'm wondering if it would uh, be good to see if we can reschedule because one of those meetings, Tara is also in on. Well, that's uh, at 1230. Is that uh, the board meetings at 1230? Correct. So we do have time to finish. All right. Well, uh, let, let's keep going. Let's see what happens. And if we need to, we can schedule a, a second session. Yeah. If we okay. Like there's more. Yeah. To be said. All right. Okay. So basically, I kind I mentioned to Tara my where I ra was raised in Arcadia, and the fact that I went to a community college, and from there I went to Cal Poly, architectural engineering course. Graduated in 1956. And then I found a position with uh, Neptune and Thomas Architects in Pasadena, who were basically involved with schools. So that's, so I felt, anyway, so that was a, a, one of my backgrounds is working in schools. And when I came, <coughs> moved to um, <coughs> Santa Barbara, Art Moser Grant were doing schools. So I worked on modernization of Santa Barbara High School, some new classrooms, and <clears throat> also worked on, with Bob Grant on the Elementary Hotel, or Motel, up on State Street. In 1960, Ken Kruger and I started out on our own. Ken, as I mentioned, uh, Tatara was raised in Santa Barbara. <clears throat> Actually, when I was working at, I have to, have to digress a little bit, when I, working at Art Moser Grant, uh, Don Zemer was working there also. Don Zemer graduated from Cal Poly in 1956, a year before I did, or 1955, I should say. And uh, Ken Kruger, I met at Art Moser Grant, and we worked there together, and so on and so forth. And, and, and six, in uh, 1960, we, Ken Kruger and I decided to start our own business. And uh, so we, we did. And uh, Kruger actually went out first, <clears throat> found himself a commission for an apartment project, I think it was. And so then I joined him. And as soon as I joined, joined him, the project kind of fell apart. So uh, we really kind of scratched from there. And I was telling Tara that in the early days, we were involved with many different types of architecture, not just schools. We did several church projects. Some of them were master plans, some were uh, sanctuaries, some were uh, classrooms and on and on. Probably uh, we worked on maybe a dozen different church projects. Uh, majority of them were master plans and, and first phase construction. And then uh, we did a little bit of uh, medical building, the uh, La Cumbra Medical Building up on La Cumbra, 200 uh, La Cumbra. And we did the Riviera Medical Medical Building over by the St. Francis Hospital and Carpenteria Medical Building on uh, the corner of Carpenteria Avenue and Argo Verde. You're probably familiar with that since mm -hmm. you live in, in Carpenteria. Uh, <clears throat> And we did work for, I'm just kind of pulling this out of the air. 
for uh, banks. We did, uh, there was a bank that started in Carpinteria called the Casitas Bank, and we were not involved with that, but subsequently, subsequent to that, they built uh, seven or eight church, uh, church uh, banks, and uh, we were involved with that, uh, the county bank in the corner of Cabrillo, uh, uh, Chapala, and uh, Canon Perdido, which is now uh, Schwab's. We did a mm-hmm. thing for them in Ventura. I sent our uh, photograph of it. We did one out, out on the Cumbra, and, and it's gone now. I think they, uh, uh, some of the banks are still uh, occupied, but it's now uh, the, a union bank. So anyway, so we did banks. We did work for Raytheon, probably did a half a dozen projects for them. Uh, 100,000 square foot one on uh, Robin Hill Road and one on uh, Los Caneros and several on their uh, Hollister Avenue site. So, um, and then we, uh, Ken's background was with an uh, a, a, a educational architect. So we moved into the educational uh realm design and master plan the Cardinia high school and the uh, uh santa barbara school district administration building and actually we did the uh, the uh educational service center which is out on uh, uh in, in uh galita and i haven't really i haven't seen that building in 40 years it's just kind of kind of out of the way anyway and then it just um, was, was that a kind of like a um for lack of a better phrase uh a gym large building for the school district at their at their center uh, the, the uh, Santa Barbara School District, that it was their administration building. Oh, I, oh, I, I think I, I was thinking of county school system. County schools is, there's an auditorium up there, there's, cl- yeah. uh, there's uh, offices, the payroll for all of the school districts, and the educational background, and uh, um, Resources for the various school districts within Santa Barbara are there, and they bring together the uh, the educators from all over the, the county to meet and discuss finances, politics, and whatever. It's basically an office building and a car and, a, and an auditorium. So, and again, I haven't been there in forty years, and I can I can hardly remember it. But I know there was a. <laughs> an auditorium there for larger gatherings and then it's basically just an office building it's yeah. on cathedral yeah cathedral up, behind the, up behind the fire department it's yeah. still there okay and let's see i as i was starting to tell tara have kept my fingers in smaller projects some in carpinteria i was involved with the fire station here we were involved with these Chevron building, which is now the city hall, I was involved with the lumber yard, the high school, middle school, did a middle school, a major addition and modernization uh, in 2000. And uh, I think one of the high, one of the projects that I uh, most enjoy and maybe respect because of my Mid-century modern was the Teamster buildings. I don't know if you remember that, Robert. Mm-hmm. It was removed about. It was over. Uh, it was on the, on the bluffs. It was on the bluffs. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't, the, that, didn't that go away and become some uh, quasi Frank Lloyd Wright building or something? Quasi, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. A uh, much larger building, and yeah. so, and. Uh, so some of my uh, smaller projects have been mid-century modern. My house is pretty much that, <laughs> although I call it carpentry a contemporary. <laughs> and uh, several houses up at, faculty houses up at Kate School and so on and so forth. So at the same time I was doing, involved with school projects, 
I kept my fingers in the smaller projects, you know, and um, I, I like wood. I, if you were to see my house, it's inside and out. It's all, well, you can see some of it here. It's all mm -hmm. cedar, the Western red cedar inside and out. And so uh, I have a real passion for wood and detailing and put it, putting it together. So the office has been, has been involved in uh, community college work up and down the state away from Long Beach to San Jose, to the City College here in town, over at Palmdale and Santa Clarita and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I haven't been, my, my last project was with uh, KBZ was for Allen, Allen Hancock College. It was a law, uh, library and learning resource center um is that on uh, the lompoc campus no no that's on their main campus no and i think steve has done some work on the lompoc campus since i left so so i think that's kind of a thumbnail sketch of, of what what i was it was about <laughs> how did you meet vera Oh, that's interesting. I, uh, she was a client. You've probably heard the story. <laughs> no, I didn't. That's why I asked. No, I was, it was, she was a client. Um, I had been, I was married, I had been married and had four kids and she was married and had two children. And, and of course you hear those stories about architects and their clients. And uh, <laughs> so this is one of them that, that, that came true. Her husband passed away of a, Massive heart attack at 42. Mm. Anyway, so I designed the house and um, we really hit it off with the, the design and being both being interested in the, the environment. And as you know, she kind of nurtured a lot of the environmental and planning issues in Carpinteria. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of nurtured and together we nurtured this house. And, which we we love and being retired and being with this covid uh, situation we just love we have when we look uh, from our family room when i look out i have a glass that's 18 feet wide and eight feet high when i look to the north i have the same glass and so we're basically outside most of the time but uh, obviously <laughs> uh comfortable in in the house and comfortable seat so um, I did send one copy or one photograph that I took of our house it's not a very good one I really would like to have a photographer come in and photograph the house but love to show you the house sometime uh, have a glass of wine and show you what uh, the detailing and my passion for wood And as far as the AIA is concerned, I was president about 1970. Tara would probably have a better date for it. And at that time, uh, it certainly wasn't as, we weren't as active as you are now. We didn't have a, an office and we didn't have a you know, secretary and administrator in the office. And so it was all just <laughs> the guys, mainly the guys. <laughs> And at that time, and the reason I mentioned that, the guys, is that if you go into KBZ today, you're going to find more females than you will males. When we first started out, and for many years, it was just it was all male. Although about 1964, 65, we hired the first female graduate from Cal Poly. And uh, so, how did I get onto that? So, uh, where were, where were, pardon? Who was that? What was her name? Pat Della, that was her married name, Pat Della. And she passed away, unfortunately, at a fairly young age, but uh, yeah. So, um, hmm, let's see. What do you remember about the early AIA days? I've heard some stories about some Pretty interesting parties you guys threw during the holidays. Well, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it was a small group then. There was uh, just a few of us. Uh, I think it was only two or th three or four offices in town, Frank. Uh, Robert Engel Hoyt, and I think Frank Year, Greer, Eric Moser Grant, and us. Uh, and Bob Nelson worked for uh, Luda Maria Riggs. And Luda and Robert had a, Bob, had, he had a nice house up on the Riviera with a swimming pool. Mm. And we would have summer parties there. And, and I remember being at a party and everybody had been there for an hour or two or three or four. And Frank Lloyd Wright was standing over by the, not Frank Lloyd Wright, Frank here, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, standing by the pool and of course he smoked a, a pipe. And then, you know, after a couple hours of eating and drinking, why somebody nudged him. And he went into the pool. Of course, I was looking right at him, and he just went in. Pipe stayed in his mouth, and <laughs> and so on and so forth. As far as one of the objectives that we, that we had, uh, Ken and I, was to have uh, special speakers, and we had um, J. Q. Q. Jones, uh, Quincy Jones. Uh, for a speaker, and we had, uh, what was her name? Uh, Esther McCoy for a speaker, and I think it was also, and Craig Elwood. So those were pretty prominent people in that mid-century modern era. Uh, the other thing that I remember about being in, you know, in the, um, AIA, what we did as a chapter was there was a movement to unionize draftsmen, for lack of a better term, or associates. And uh, so we gathered as a group, and uh, I think what we did is what many of the architects did. We came up with a, an office manual, and that office manual told about our design uh, um, where we were, what we, uh, our thoughts were about design and, and the art, our architecture and uh, so on and so forth. It also delineated the different uh, uh, perks that the employees had. We talked about, you know, once a year there would be a, an evaluation and and this was all put down in, you know, in black and white. I think we had about a 20, 30 page <coughs> document. Uh, we developed a profit sharing program at that time, which was like a 401k. And then I think that was a early, yeah, early 70s. Um, and um, vacations, we, 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 uh, uh, we, we put that down in black and white. Basically, a person had two weeks vacation, and then for, for every subsequent year that he or she worked, they'd have a, they'd an, an additional day. As I look back at KBZ now, I think majority of the people have been there over 10 years, and they all have four, four weeks of vacation. And they, so, so that's, I think, one of the big things that came out of the, that. And then the union situation just kind of withered away. Uh, Tara, can I share my screen? I found a photograph. Let's see if, um, if, the, if this photograph um, sparks any uh, memories. Yeah, that's uh, Dick Nelson's pool, I think. It is. That, yeah. Well, that's where uh, Frank Greer was standing. And, and uh, you know, he had a, I think he had a, uh, a jacket on, uh, you know, maybe had a tie on and he was smoking his pipe and uh, he just, somebody just nudged him and he went in the pool and bounced back up again. <laughs> Got out and the party went on. Everybody had a chuckle and <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 
So, <laughs> so yes, that was a good place for a party. And I think, uh, I think he passed away just recently. Yeah, August of 2017. Yeah, he was up in uh, Buellton or, or, or Los yeah. uh, Solvang. Yeah, yeah, he was he was president of the AIA and ch local chapter. I think uh, 1967. Oh, okay. You, you've got a lot of information there, Robert. <laughs> well, we're trying. We're trying to um, to collect the history, and of course. Us younger guys don't know the history, so we've got to we've got to talk to the senior group. Well, I'm 87 years old, so you're you're I'm right 80. up there. You're <laughs> it hardly seems that hardly seems possible. It hardly seems possible. I'm I'm still active, Robert. I'm still walk. I worked out this morning, and <clears throat> I have two acres of avocados that I tend to and my wife works in the garden and has about 150 roses and so mm. uh, I think living in this beautiful environment has a lot to do with our longevity. Uh, that probably has a lot to do with it, I would agree, I would agree. The other thing that I would have been involved with for the over the years is the Casa del Herrero. Mm -hmm. And I became involved in the late 1990s. And uh, Joan Jackson, she was, had been on the Kate School Board for a trustee. And we did, had, uh, we were involved with half a dozen or more projects up there, little faculty houses and so on and so forth. And so she... And, she invited me to join the board, and, which I did, and then I became very involved with the building committee and have been involved with the building committee ever since we, I joined the, uh, the, the CASA. And as you know, it uh, has received a national uh, award, award, historical award, uh, one of very few. I think your courthouse is another one, Robert. Mm -hmm. uh, so, now for the for the casa, is it did it um, was it designated more as a, a national historic landscape than? I think, well, I think the landscape had a, a major part of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's an interesting place. I think the thing that has interested me, being you know, kind of a mid-century modern situations i look at the front elevation of the house and then it's strictly uh, Angelou andalusian farmhouse situation but then you go through the door and then you have all these antiques and artwork and woodwork and so well put together from a craftsman standpoint so i think both the simplicity of the exterior of course you go around the back side and it's not quite as austere, but I think uh, George Fox, uh, uh, my net memories, George Fox Stedman was, uh, became very interested in the house. You probably know as much about it as I do. He became very involved and uh, very meticulous and went to Spain with, uh, with, uh, the antiquarian, uh, uh, can't think of the word, the antiquarian, the same one that worked with uh, up at the Hearst Castle. And uh, they purchased ceilings and doors and shutters and windows and lights and tile. And he, uh, and then George Washington Smith had to integrate this into, the, into his house. Mm. How do you think the practice has changed over over the years? Well, it's interesting when 
Yeah, I mean, just the office itself. I mean, the, the, the office is the same building, same buildings as it was when I was there. But we had a desk that we stood up to. We had a stool. So we did most of our drawing in a standing position. And of course, everybody's seated now. It's certainly not using, uh, uh, not in a standing position. Um, KBZ, about five years ago, had a gentleman uh, that whose wife wanted to go back to school at Cal and he'd been with KBC for several years so KBC uh, was able to set him up up in Berkeley with a computer and and so on and so forth he was familiar with KBC all of the uh, the formats and the, the way the KBC worked he was familiar with the uh, the computer that had all the drawings and the correspondence and specifications and on and on, and so he worked out of his uh, out of his house up in uh, mm. Berkeley for a year or two, and then about uh, three years ago, a fellow that I worked with, uh, uh, moved Patrick Penlocky. He came from. Uh, the Philippines. He was educated as an architect in the Philippines. He went, worked in Singapore for nine years and then um, came to the United States and I was the first person. He worked with me on the uh, Alan Hancock Project, Library and the Resource, Learning Resource Center. And uh, he was a very good drafts person as far as an, an architect, as far as using a computer. And so, I mean, he was a real whiz. About three years ago, he went back to the Philippines, and he's still working for KBZ. Mm. He knew everybody. He knew how they thought. You know what their thinking was, and and he had you know all of this seventeen years history. He had all the information in the computer that he could uh, he could grab uh, the information from. And so when this COVID nineteen came along, uh, the office automatically just went viral or virtual and so they've been working working from home of course everybody knows every each other and they work together and they know the files and so on so it's been very uh, easy so i think that's the thing that's probably going to happen you're going to see more people you're going to see some people being able to work at home more mm -hmm. and i think that could be an advantage in an area where you have people are driving an hour or so to get to and from work. A uh, person can come into the office for two or three days a week and spend a couple of days uh, at their house. It, it would still be, be very uh, uh, successful. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I want, the only other thing for the EIA I wanted to mention is that, uh, you know, we had the 1969 uh, Chevron, I think it was, or uh, Standard Oil, uh, oil. Yeah, that oil event. Event out in the, one of the platforms. And I know Bob Cleveland, and I'm not sure if he was in our, I think he might have been in our office at that time. And he actually represented the chapter back in Washington, D.C. to mm. discuss it. Mm. Of all of the projects that you've um, had a hand in, uh, which one st stands out? I really like the house that I live in. I'd like to show it to you. Uh, uh, the the uh, Teamster building is one that I mm. really uh, enjoy looking back at I guess that it not just because the building is because the way the, because of the education I had and at the time um, with um, the Quincy Jones and the, the many architects that were doing that work at that time uh, uh, you know my carpentry I was involved with the the, uh, the lumber yard I don't know if you've been in the lumber yard Oh yeah, is that that's the wood one, right? It's the wood one, and I yeah. think that you know that blends in with the community. 
Mm -hmm. And it comes from the, the older buildings in the community, the use of wood, and, and so on and so forth. So When I lived in Carp, I went to that hardware store quite often. Yes, it is. It, 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 yes, yeah. I do too, and I always look at the, wood, the details. And <coughs> working with wood was a real passion for me. <coughs> so, uh, with our, we had, we ended up with five principals, <coughs> and each principal had a, a project. But then there he would have, in some cases, designers and and uh, draftsmen to work with him. Where, but. So there's a lot of projects I was involved with, but I wasn't necessarily the head designer. Mm -hmm. But uh, but they were what I would consider my projects. So as you know, um, you know, uh, firms uh, gather principals, principals leave, um, and quite often the name of the firm uh, morphs over time. Um, you know. Um, Moore and Phillips were added to um, many firms, but uh, KBZ has always been KBZ, even though you have more principals there with other names. Why not change what's why well, not the name? It's up to them and whether they want to change the name or not. They can use KBZ, but uh, I think the name has been there for for sixty years certain segment of the community recognizes the name. Mm -hmm. And if you bring in a new name, it's all like a bringing in a new firm. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a transition process where we suggest uh, Don's like uh, Joe Wilcox, who is uh, one of the principals now. We, you know, back whenever it was 30 years ago, we felt that he was a good person to kind of uh, replicate Ken Kruger talking, going out and, and uh, talking to new clients and so, and so on and so forth. Uh, we brought him <laughs> in, <coughs> in and we <coughs> gave him a raise but he certainly wasn't up to the level of, of uh, the compensation that we received. <coughs> Gave him a two-year uh, probation period. So he could either back out or we could back out at that time. And then after, after uh, two years, then he would be made a, or she would be made a partner. And at that time, there'd be a seven year, another, another five years where they would, as the, their compensation would increase <clears throat> on an incremental basis for, for five years. <clears throat> so this did one thing, it brought uh, people that we knew into the firm, brought people into the firm that didn't have to put out money or buy shares. And so it was just a, a kind of a logical a very easy transition and, and it's worked <clears throat> and we had a, a, a retirement program that we basically had a profit sharing program and so that was kind of the retirement program so uh, when a person retired from the firm he had had to work there for 30 years before he could retire and then he would get two years of compensation his salary for two years and then that was it he didn't take shares with them he didn't you know it, it was then uh he was out he was out of the firm mm. and that's worked this was easy for young people coming in mm -hmm. becoming a partner and it and by i mean i know i have a brother-in-law that was a, a geologist and he worked for a firm for uh, you know, 10, 12 years or so, and then people were starting to leave, That part, his partners were starting to leave, and so the firm virtually just kind of, everybody went their own way. Mm. And so there, uh, whereas when they were working together, I mean, they had a real strong force. Mm. And uh, anyway, so, 
So KPCs, yeah, we'll see how long it keeps going. I keep my fingers crossed. They seem to be busy right now, uh, but they don't know what this virus, they're basically uh, 90, Nine well, ninety ninety a hundred percent in public works, either schools or, or or otherwise, and we don't know what the money's going to be. Where the yeah, money's going to be? That's going to be a challenge. You know, uh, yeah. uh, nine months from now. I mean, I yeah. can see where county, state, schools are going to have a real budgetary issue. Yeah. Well, um, I don't have any more questions. Um, Tara, do you have? Uh, any questions? Well, I did have a question because, Don, your house sounds so amazing in Carpinteria. And one of the things that we're doing now is these um, virtual tours. We're, we're actually, KP, we're doing one with Terry um, Kassan at KPC. Oh. Yeah, oh. The, the Santa Clarita property. Oh, okay. Oh, great. And good. so he's going to, um, because the internet there is not very good, he's actually going to pre-record it. Um, and then, you know, so that's already in the schedule for next month. We're really excited about that. Okay. But I was wondering if we could set up some kind of virtual tour where you are walking around your house. Sure. Obviously, we can't bring people there. Sure. but you, And you could show us your incredible house yeah. and... Um, you know the woodwork and detail and everything, and talk about it at the same time. Yeah, I'd be happy to. That'd be great. I'd be happy to, and I'll have to say that it is. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of gold and you know doesn't very matter. expensive uh, <laughs> issue items. It's just the way the wood and the glass and and the landscape has, has come together. I, we built a house for or she built a house and. For like eighty-five thousand dollars, and bought the two and a half acres for fifteen thousand. Wow. You know, the house probably worth three, three million or more now. So anyway, what I'm all I'm saying, it's a very plain, you know, form follows function. Mm -hmm. Bring the outside in. This is for our architect members, and I think they would really love it. Okay, I think would. Okay. All right. Well, we'll work on that right. separately. Okay. Awesome. Okay, Tar, nice to meet you. Thank Say you. hi to Vera for me. Okay, uh, Robert, where you you live in Santa Barbara? Yes, on the Mesa. Okay. Have you ever come back to Carpentry? I did see you there the other day on a coffee at the. Uh, no, not often. Starbucks. Starbucks. Or, um, more ago. often, I I'm driving through it on 101. I hardly ever get there anymore. I've... Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tom. We'll be in touch. Bye now.